the midway games that we have that are outside where you, they're the fun old style carnival games where you can throw in the balls at the dolls and dart throwing and the water race games and the ring toss. Those are always fun basketball games. And then there's, we have the tattoo artist and the character artists that are on site most of the year. So yeah, lots of things to do outside. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Spotlight Houston, where we bring you the best of the people, places, and events in Houston. This week, we sit down with Wade Broussard, General Manager of the Downtown Aquarium, to talk about everything that you can find at the aquarium in downtown Houston. And now your host, Blanca Quesada. Hi, did you happen to know that there's a place in Houston that brings you very close to our underwater world? And it's one of my favorite places to go because there's a lot of different species of fish and other animals to see and enjoy. And it offers hands-on experiences, which is the best thing you can do. And as well as other educational programs, plus you can enjoy great meals and plenty of other entertainment. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Downtown Aquarium, which has been a Houston landmark for a long time. And so today I'm really excited to be doing this interview because I've always wanted to know what happens behind the scenes at this venue. Like, how do they keep the fish and animals so healthy and happy? So I've invited Wade Broussard, who's been the general manager at the Downtown Aquarium for the past six years. So I'm sure he's loving it there. And he's also a certified scuba diver and gets to go in there sometimes into these tanks and hang out with the team and do some hands-on help, right? That's plus correct. he's been plus he's been with Landry's and Downtown Aquarium for the past 25 years. So welcome to the show, Wade. It's so Thank great to have you, you here. I appreciate um, it. Yeah. I'm really excited because like I said, I've always wondered what happens behind the scenes because <laughs> it's such a huge venue. How many species of aquatic animals do you have, fish and otherwise? Well, we have over 300 species um, on the property, and many of those are, are there for the guests to see when they go through the different themed exhibits that we have on our first floor. And then we have the very large aquarium in the restaurant that's 150,000 gallons. It has a lot of interesting species in it. And of course, the shark building which used to be the old waterworks building. The train will take you through there, and it's a 250,000-gallon aquarium that has all the larger sharks and also the sawfish. Yeah, it's a lot of little critters to take care of. Plus, you have all of these other animals that you have in other exhibits. Yes, we have ambassador animals that are on the property that we use for educational groups, school groups, and outreaches when we go and take animals out to schools and fairs and things. So you have to see the, that you might not see at the aquarium. You'll see, we have a sloth, a serval, a porcupine. We have many different birds, different snakes and lizards that are all kind of behind the scenes that we bring out for different shows and interactions with guests. And of course, the alligators and those beautiful tigers. Yes, we have the alligators and the, the swamp exhibit. And then we have four Bengal tigers. Three of them are white tigers and then one is orange. And we got to have those alligators there are native to, to Houston here too as well. <laughs> yes. It's always nice to see uh, local anglers come through and, and see the redfish and alligators. And they, they tell, tell some fun stories about how they've caught them or been close to getting bit by one. So it's very nice to have. Yeah. So Wade, is there any way you can tell us a little bit of the history of this venue? Because it's been around for a very long time, but before it got there, there was a fire station there. Yes, this was fire station number one, and it was in operation for quite a while. Then it was vacant for quite a while, and Landry's took over the landmark and redeveloped it into the downtown aquarium. Also adjacent to our the back of the property, we have the old waterworks building. It's been around since the 1890s, and it supplied fresh water to the city of Houston for quite quite a few years. And that is the area that has been turned into the shark tunnel. So the train goes through it. And it's a historical historical site. And we've been open for 20 years now as the downtown aquarium. We opened in February of 2003. So we've been celebrating our 20-year anniversary this year with some special deals and some parties that we've had throughout the summer. Um, so it's a, been a great venue. 
And it's amazing how they came up with the idea of having an aquarium downtown. Yes. And I think I'm everybody sure at the time, thought, Yeah, I'm sure at the time it was unheard of. Yes, especially when the Ferris wheel went up. That was very interesting to have a, a 100-foot Ferris wheel right in the middle of downtown Houston with a beautiful light package that it has. And so it's quite a draw for people. Mm-hmm. And then bringing in all these fish and, and animals and it's like, well... How did they make all that possible? Well, we work with some great vendors all across the the country and also in Australia, which we will get fish and they'll get flown in or trucked in from all over the country. We'll partner up with different zoos and aquariums also. And if we have too many of one fish and they don't have enough, we'll do a a swap with them. We've been very successful in the past with breeding our uh, giant shovelnose guitar fish. And we were sending those out to many different facilities all over the United States. So it's a lot of, with the zoos and aquariums, a lot of trading and moving animals around to better better suit the, the needs of the facility and also to bring the different animals into different populations. Yeah, I'm sure it takes a lot of coordination to bring certain species from certain parts of the world and then get them acclimated to the tanks at the aquarium. Yes, we have a, a great team of biologists um, and zookeepers on staff. We have about 40 uh, employees that are just dedicated to the the care of the animals. They take care of all of the quarantine areas. Like you said, when we have new fish that come in to make sure that they are, are ready to go before they get introduced into the, uh, the exhibits that they're going in. Uh, they work well with the, the vets that we have uh, that come in and check out all the fish and all the different animals to make sure that everyone's healthy and taken care of. We're also part of the American Zoo Zoo Association, and we have to do stringent accreditation to make sure that all the animals are taken care of year after year. As visitors, we don't get to see any of that, and we don't get to hear about how you brought in all these animals and and fish, and so, but it takes a lot. It takes a lot. It does. A lot of time and a lot of people. And we have some really good programs, mainly for children, that we do with being able to be a marine biologist of the day or a zoologist of the day. And those are younger children and they get to come in and they're paired up with biologists and our educational staff. So they'll come in, walk the exhibits, just like our staff do to see all the different animals, identify animals, and then they'll go make their diets for the day. So they'll get to prepare the food that they're going to feed the animals later in the day. They get to have lunch in the restaurant, of course, and do all the rides. But it's really just showing them what does it take to be a zookeeper or a marine biologist. They're willing to do that. It's a very successful program that we have. We also have another one called Working on the Wild Side, and it's geared more for teens. So they get to do a a little bit more hands-on experience with the animals, diets, and other things. So also the species that you commit that you bring in from around the world, is it do you think that these species were selected so that they could get along with each other? And yes. that their diets are similar, maybe? Yes. All the, the exhibits are, are very well thought out. We don't want to introduce animals that would not get along or would not be around each other in the wild. Most of them are themed out for Amazon fish or the rig which is the Gulf of Mexico. So you're going to see fish that you would naturally see in the Gulf of Mexico so that they do get along better. And yes, so that their diets are it's a little bit easier to feed yeah. similar fit. Yeah. What about the sharks? Where do the sharks come from? Oh, the sharks, they'll come from, from all over. We have a, a sawfish, which has been in the tank for almost 20 years now. And she is, she's quite massive and she's from Gulf of Mexico area. And all the other sharks are from really from all over the world. Yeah. How do you keep such massive sharks contained in 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 an environment that really isn't natural to them? We keep them very well fed so that they don't (laughs) that's important. (laughs) Yeah, so that they don't they don't interact with each other negatively. And it's the trainers that go into the tanks and do all the cleaning. They take care of the the environment so that the, the sharks are they have everything that they need. Uh, when the biologists do feedings, it's very interesting to see that they have all the tr- sharks are trained to come up to a certain station to be able to eat. So the brown sharks know that they're going to get fed on one certain side of the, the aquarium and they won't mess with the other sharks when they're getting the sand tiger sharks when they're getting fed on the other side. 
So it's very copacetic for them. Wow. Wow. That's interesting how they're smart enough to get trained. Absolutely. Do they recognize their trainers? I don't know if they do or not. I just think they, they understand when they see bodies over in their feeding area, they know what's going to happen. So Yeah. So do they go into the tanks? The trainers go into the tanks with these sharks? Not for feeding, only for cleaning and doing any maintenance that they might have to do in the tank. And it's very, they wear the chain mail suits as a precaution. They also have a safety divers that are, that will be in the water just in case to keep the sharks from getting too nosy about what the divers are doing while they're in the water. Yeah. And you never know what's going to trigger them, right? Right. They are all wild animals. Yeah. Have you gone into the tanks with these sharks? I have not been into the shark tank yet. That's on my bucket list. I've only only been able to go into the dining room tank, which is the big 50,000 gallon aquarium. And I've gotten to feed the stingrays in there and also the big groupers and big shelving those guitar fish. It's quite fun. The divers and biologists, they have a, a remarkable, remarkable job, but it's not all, it's not all fun and games. There's a lot of cleaning involved uh, with the tanks and the acrylic and even siphoning out all the sand. Um, so it's a pretty strenuous day for them. You it's a lot, have of, to lot keep, of fun. Yeah, you kind of have to keep them, I guess, healthy from bacteria or viruses or anything else that can grow in these tanks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Have you had any special encounters or experiences when you've been in the tank with the fish? No, not while I'm in the tanks. Most of the time, like when I'm watching the divers or watching the biologists in the tanks, we take plenty of videos and pictures and just seeing some of the different interactions with either the smaller sharks or some of the, the we have a, a really big snapper in the, the dining room aquarium and he'll come right up to the right up to the divers and just kind of staring them down like I'm ready for my food. It's time. And it's, it's like just so, up, so right? yeah, it's so interesting to see some of the different personalities uh, yeah. with some fish. Yeah. Well, they don't seem like they're too smart, but I bet you they are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, I yeah. think one of my favorite, favorite things is when the birds are out, we'll have a, we have a couple stages at the property where we'll do shows for guests and they'll have the birds out or the armadillo or the porcupine. And those are some of the animals that we don't have on exhibit. They're only, they train, they do shows, they do enrichment opportunities. But I think having the birds out, that's one of my favorite things is to see, because they're just, they're so majestic and beautiful. And it's just one more thing that we have at the property to really add to the experience. Yeah. It takes a lot of time. Is it like a 24 hour type job? It really is. From the animal care specialist, they get in very early in the mornings and check everything out early, do all the diets and the feeding and make sure everything's clean and beautiful before we open the 10 a.m. for the guest. And some of the, the training will go on throughout the day. And then in the evening, you've got your other crew that comes in and do all the, the closing items and the, the late night feeds and making sure everything's turned on and turned off for the animals at night. And then our water quality specialists, the ones that really monitor all the, the water quality, make sure everything's perfect. Theirs is 24 hours. If there's something that goes wrong in the middle of the night, they'll get a page and come up and check it out. So it's really a, it really is something that you don't think about that they're always doing. Zoo professionals are just, they're always on call. Anytime we have storms coming through, there's always a, a team that's going to ride out the storms at the facility to make sure that the animals are taken care of. Did anything happen when Hurricane Harvey came through? Hurricane Harvey was very devastating for the property. It's the first time we've ever taken on water inside the building. So we did, we had major power outages. We did have generators that kicked on. We had a team of seven individuals that rode out the storm for the week there while we didn't have power and really working to moving fish from one tank to another or getting them into special quarantine tanks to keep them going. I think the biggest tragedy was the shark tunnel, the shark tank. It did have massive damage over in that building because it's a very low spot on the property. And we lost all the sharks except for the sawfish. She's the only one that survived. Oh, thank goodness. Yes. But I'm so sorry. We lost so many sharks. Yes. And that was, it was, it took a while, of course, to, you can't just pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I need some sharks because they're, they're coming from all over the world. And we, we had some really good help from SeaWorld in San Antonio. They sent a helicopter with supplies to help get us through that. So everybody really in the zoo 
zoo community really came together to make sure that the animals didn't suffer. Yeah, I'm so happy that y'all managed to take care of all these species of fish and animals during this terrible time. Yes. But but it, now it's great. It's a lot of fun and a lot of uh, great experiences. I love, love, love the exhibits too. Who creates those for you? Well, when we originally opened 20 years ago, I, I guess the designers with Landry's worked with zoo professionals and also with our uh, director of biology to come up with the best design for the building. Since it was a historical building, there wasn't a lot of tear down and rip up and make new. We had to deal with the building the way it was. So they designed mm-hmm. the exhibits to go through and they picked out seven different themed areas for the guests to go through. So we have the swamp exhibit is the first that you walk into where you see the alligators and of course the yeah. you know, the gar and snapping turtles. And then you have the shipwreck exhibit, which is one of my favorites because it has the live coral exhibit inside of it, uh, which it has some really big clams and all of the kids love. It has the dories and the Nemo's, the little clownfish um, in there. That's one of the favorites for the kiddos. Um, and then the Amazon exhibit, you go through it and see all the, the piranhas and the archer fish. So yeah, lots of great themes in the exhibit. Yeah, the rainforest, right? The rainforest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And of course the tigers, their exhibit is wonderful. Oh yes. And back in 2019, we uh, got a new part of their exhibit. So it's a very nice outdoor space for them. So they've got a, a very good indoor space with a huge pool and some nice areas for, for them to be lazy. And then we've got the outdoor exhibit so they can be outside and sun in the sun on top of the rocks. They have a little pool there and they get a lot of interaction with the guest because we have a training door that we put in so that guests can come up and book an experience to see the tigers very up close and personal with our trainers. And then they'll get to do the feeding and watch some of the different training aspects of how we interact with the tigers. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I need to do that. I haven't done that yet. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, and I love it's those one tigers. of those we do. We do a couple of those almost every day. They can you can book to, to be with the tigers or the sloth or the serval or meet the birds or reptiles, whatever fits your fancy is we've got it available. Yeah. And you also have like hints on experience when visitors come in, they can get to touch the, the starfish, the stingrays. The stingray. Yeah. Yes, I forgot about the stingray. stingray. We have the stingray touch tank, and that, that's a really nice area. We have uh, stingrays, and there's some other little fish in the aquarium, but you can go in and, and feel the stingrays and how supple they are, and then you can get little fish and feed them, and they just, they love it. They love interacting with the guest, and that's definitely one of the, uh, the highlights when you go through the exhibit. Yeah, I always have fun there. So there's always a lot to see and do at the aquarium. And also when mentioning exhibits, I was thinking of all the corals and all the rocks and things uh, that get to go into the aquariums for the fish. I'm yes. sure that, that they come from all over the world as well. They do. And we also, we do fragment fragment corals where we grow corals in the, in our quarantine area. And then we'll trade, like I said earlier, we'll trade with some of the other zoos and aquariums that have different types of corals that we want to, that we would like to have, or if we have some that they would like to have. So that's a pretty neat program. And we have the live coral in the exhibit, only in that one area in the shipwreck. All the other corals that you see are all synthetic. So it's very, yes. And that's one of the big Yeah, I thought they were real. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they they have to scrub them down almost on the daily to keep them looking like that. Because they'll get an algae and everything will grow on them if they don't. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot, like I said, a lot to see and a lot to do. Great experiences there. You mentioned a couple of the the programs that are available, mainly for kids. Are these throughout the year? They are. We host them almost every Saturday throughout the year. Um, with, we'll switch it up between the marine biologists of the day or the zoologists of the day or the working on the wild side. We also have during the the summertime, we do... Uh, week-long camps, and we have different themes each week. So those are fun. Let's get dropped off in the morning and picked up in the afternoon. And then another really fun thing that we do are the overnights. So yes. we'll do sleepovers with the tigers. And guests will come in. And that's not just for kids, of course. We'll have uh, the chaperones and parents. They'll come in, eat in the restaurant, do some crafts, go ride the rides, play some games, come back in the building do some enrichment. So they'll make enrichment for the tigers, whether it's a paper mache or 
putting meat inside different containers for the tigers to play with. And then they'll get to introduce the enrichment to the tigers and watch how they react. And then, of course, the bedding down at night, which it's kind of hard. You're sleeping right there with the tigers right in front of you. So it's one of those where you might get a little bit of sleep, but you know, you've always got that tiger watching you at night. So yeah, I'm sure those kids are super excited. They can't go to sleep. Full of energy. It's, it's always fun to see in the morning because we feed them breakfast in the morning. It's fun to see the kids all wired and, and ready to go. And then the, the adults are kind of dragging there. They didn't get much sleep that night. Yeah. Is there a fee for all these programs or do you, are any of these programs free? There are fees for all the programs. They're all different uh, different bundles that you can do for them, whether you're adding them on to your daily experience or if you're just coming in strictly for an interaction with the animals or one of the, uh, the, the programs that we offer. Yeah, there's so much to see in the aquarium part of the downtown aquarium. Lots to do, lots to see, even little things to buy. Great souvenirs. Yes. And, yeah. um, kids always want those. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then- and then you've been mentioning the restaurant area, but there's still some more stuff that we can do outside the restaurant area. You mentioned yeah, the we wheel. The midway, yeah, the midway games that we have that are outside. where you, They're the fun old style carnival games where you can throw in the balls at the dolls and dart throwing and the water race games and the ring toss. Those are always fun. Basketball games. And then there's we have the tattoo artist and the character artists that are on site most of the year. So yeah, lots of things to do outside. I know it's been a little hot lately, so the uh, the outdoors is it's been kind of hard being downtown outside. Yes, hundred degree <laughs> heat. We definitely felt the summer. Yeah, but fall up. Fall is coming up soon. We've got a lot of fun events that are planned for the rest of the year in yeah, October. What are some of those events? In October on the seventeenth is actually International Sawfish Day. So we'll be talking about conservation efforts for sawfish throughout the day. We'll have booths set up where you can talk to some of the biologists and educators about sawfish and what we can do to help their their habitat and their species. We also have a wine event that we do where it's a kind of a sip and stroll where you're going through the exhibit and getting to taste some great wines. We're going to be featuring wines from the, the Northwest Pacific region. And you'll have small appetizer, finger foods, and then a, a live band upstairs. That's going to be on the 20th of October. And then, of course, coming up, we've got Thanksgiving in November. We always do our a buffet each year in the Nautilus Ballroom. And then Breakfast with Santa is a, a very big event for us. We do seven to eight different breakfasts throughout the month of December where guests can come in and, and see Santa, of course, and interact with Sharky and Nero and some of the other characters that we have. Have a little breakfast and enjoy the park for the morning. And take pictures with Santa? Oh, yes. We yeah. set up a little Santa village for everybody to take photos. And it's quite a it's quite a it's quite an event to go to. A lot of people make it a tradition where they come year after year after year. And it's fun to see the kids growing up and becoming, uh, some of them becoming adults and having kids of their own. Yeah. Are you still going to have uh, music outside the, the aquarium? We do for certain events. We For two of the parties that we had this summer, we had uh, live music outside. But typically we don't. We do, during the summer, we have the Latin beats, which is the salsa dancing on Friday nights. But that's only in June, July, and August. So that's already ended for the year. Yeah. So your events start again in August, uh, October, sorry. Yeah. In October, right? End of okay. September. Okay. Well, is there anything that personally you would like for our listeners to take away from what you've said and from going to the aquarium and experiencing the whole venue? Is there anything that you want them to know? Yeah, I think it's just, it's a fun time. We partner up with not only the Downtown Aquarium, but Kima Boardwalk and Pleasure Pier. So if you wanted to look at purchasing a pass, you can do all three parks over a weekend like we have for Labor Day weekend. But come back to the aquarium and check us out if it's been a while. See some of the different fish that have maybe changed changed up in the exhibits. We have a lot of uh, employees that work for us that came as children when they were coming for a field trip and you interview them and they're like, well, I haven't been here since I was in the, the fifth grade. Well, that's too long. You need to come back and, and check it out, see some of the new rides and new games. So just yeah. come and have a good time. Well, in your, was it 20, 25 years of experience there at the downtown library, the down, sorry, the downtown aquarium, 
what changes have you seen? What have been some of your greatest experiences there? I think some of the greatest, well, greatest experiences are trying to improve on the programs that we have year after year with new managers and new staff, everybody bringing their ideas forward to say, hey, we've done this program in the past, but I think we could tweak it a little bit to make it more enjoyable for the guests and change some of the things up. And also with technology updates, updating things that were cutting edge 20 years ago, light packages and like the Ferris wheel, we got a brand new light package for it a couple of years ago. Everything's changing and upgrading. So I think just seeing the property evolve from 20 years ago, it's been a lot of fun. Have the menus changed? Yes, we change the menu usually once a year and then we'll have a, a featured menu that we do every quarter. So there's always something fresh and new on the menu. And then we have some of our, our traditional dishes that have been on for, for 20 years because they're fan favorites. And if people want to have a special event there, can they do that? Yes, we have a, the Nautilus Ballroom, which is on the located on the third floor. It'll seat up to 450 people for a seated seated dinner. And then we can do over 600 for just for a, a cocktail, cocktail parties, weddings and bar mitzvahs and birthday parties, you name it. And we can service it. So it's a lot of fun. And then if we want to do smaller parties, we can do those, of course, in the aquarium restaurant. Mm -hmm. Well, if we want more details or information about everything that happens at the downtown aquarium, where can we find it? You can find that on our website at aquariumrestaurants.com and just look at our calendar of events. And it'll have everything listed, all the programs listed. If you wanted to purchase tickets, you can do it online. If you wanted to look at meet and greets for the, the sloth or the tigers or the birds, you can do all of it. You can purchase it all online. And of course, if you just have some general questions, you can call us and ask and we'll be happy to help. What's your phone number? It is 713-223-3474. Well, thank you so much for being here, Wade. And for describing the great adventures that we will experience when we go to the downtown aquarium and for letting us know about all the fish and all the different animals there, including the tigers and the sharks, and that we can continue to enjoy because you keep changing things and, and making sure that everybody's going to have a great experience, not just kids, but adults as well. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me. And thank you as well for joining me on Spotlight Houston. And if you have any comments, please get in touch. And if you have any story ideas, please let me know. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Spotlight Houston, a production of StoryZone Media. 